It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And tonight's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Broncos and the Packers, and it's coming up next. And we come to you from one of the truly iconic stadiums in the NFL as you get a look at Lambeau Field here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We all know this community lives for its Packers, and the green and gold came out of the tunnel a short time ago, and it was loud. We are ready for football. So are they as the Packers get set to match up with the Denver Broncos. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gunn on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather. Snow and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game? Because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is often muffled when there's a snow game. And the second part, what's the footwear you got on? Does that fit the turf you're playing on? And how will it handle as things get a little bit slick? The punter and kickoff man Sam Martin to get us started. And off we go from Lambeau. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. And we get a glance here at their leader. The man who will be calling the plays under center. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do. Lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. A first down run, good for about three. Second and seven coming up. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. From the gun, it's far. Escaping the pressure right, and he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Now far. And this is going to be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. And he'll send this one into the cold Lambeau night. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for Let's and taken. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. It's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers. I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's, not, so, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not. that tells me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. 
They work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're a Robin, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now Elway to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That catch good for five. It's third down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that in-line point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. And he goes out right around the 39. That throw is not going to get him a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. Got a man right side. It's sharp. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. There we go, baby. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sidelines thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Elway looking to pass again. His throw incomplete. That is first incompletion after a four-for-four four start. Yeah, but they shouldn't back off from what they're doing. I like the play calling right out of the gate. I like the tone that they're setting. Keep going in that direction. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the shotgun, Elway. Throw left side, complete to Sharp. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play the game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Broncos have taken the early lead on the road here at Lambeau. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stuff it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And it's now a 7 nothing game. So that drive in total eight plays, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos.
So after the touchdown, Martin now on to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. They'll run on first down. Green. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that second down they'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here and if it's a long play so be it but the main goal get a couple of first downs run some plays run some clock allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score from the shotgun it's far throw left side complete that's Kramer and the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Hands it off out of the gun. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. The running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And after the good gain last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game, as we just saw there. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Throwing is far. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. Almost feels like anything you can do, we're going to try and match or do better. We've already seen one touchdown pass from the opposition. They tried to equal it on that throw. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Favre. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Here's J.K. Scott now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And that will hit and continue on out of bounds. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Here 
Here's Elway. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here's a give to Davis. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Davis, he'll try to run for it. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Elway will throw. He finds Smith out of the backfield. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense, humming here in the early going. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Now a handoff to Davis. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Second and four. Now it's Elway. He'll drop this off for Davis. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. On first down, Elway. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They go back to the ground now with Davis. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. To throw his Elway. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Oh, he left that one in a bad spot, but fortunately it's just an incompletion and not picked to bring up fourth down. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. 
Uh, distance wasn't the problem, but he did need some help from the right upright, and he got it, a little kiss and in. Yeah, fortunately, he caught on the inside of the upright, and that pushed it through. This isn't like a baseball foul pole where you hit any part of it and it counts. It's got to go through the post. If he hits it on the outside, that's no good. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. And now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Here's Farb to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Kramer. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. To throw is far. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. And they'll set up shop in territory at the 45 yard line so more problems here in this first quarter already two scores down and here they give away the football and if I'm the head coach I think it's time to start lighting a fire under some of these guys now you have to do it within your personality they can't perceive it as fake but I'd go get after some guys because they don't look ready to play to me they look flat uninspired it's time to get moving After the interception, here's Elway. And that nearly intercepted. Oh, the free safety roaming into position almost had it, but it's second down. That was nice work there defensively to force the incompletion. Now, even though this drive started in plus territory, they're still not in field goal range yet. So they can work towards another couple of stops and not allowing that turnover to hurt. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now Elway. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. There's Elway to throw. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it. After three plays, 
have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. <laughs> Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And the Broncos get there and take him down. He couldn't get rid of it. He winds up losing a yard. It's second down. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I can dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. They'll drop to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around. And I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? On third down, he'll drop to throw. This one swung out here to Jones. They had a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. Nothing to score after one on EA Sports. Back for the second quarter in Green Bay. It's the Packers in possession of the football. And with the snow here, maybe asking too much of the kicker to try a field goal. So instead, offense on the field, they'll go for it on fourth down. Got his man. It's driver complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Both sides were holding their breath there on that fourth down play, and the offense can breathe a sigh of relief. And both knew exactly where the first down markers were. You know the defense is trying to guard those sticks and try and keep people in front. But somehow, some way, those guys found a way to pick it up. So first and 10 now from the 30. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. On second down, far. This is caught, and it's a Packers touchdown. A great effort there. 30 yards, and the Packers are back within a score. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? On is Mason Crosby for the point after. 
And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So the drive there took six plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive. Missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there. You've given yourself a chance. You're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. They begin with a run by Davis. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. They'll try the right side here with Davis. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage. And now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Broncos on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, Elway. That's complete to show. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that's going to make it fourth down. Well, the coverage was tight that time. They allowed the pass underneath to him, but they rallied to him pretty fast, too. Converged on him and got him down. That'll bring up fourth down. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people. Find some other playmakers. But always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. On first down, Green. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now back to throw. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off at the 38, and they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. You don't see this often. A quarterback of his caliber, two first-half interceptions. It's absolutely surprising because it happens so rarely. You're searching for what reason, what's going on out there. It's not just maybe the defense is playing well. Is his horoscope off? His biorhythms? What is it? You went horoscope on us, Davis. Well, I was thinking maybe REM sleep was off. I'm trying to come up with something. <laughs> Anything, right? So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now a 
That's Elway. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. On first, they'll throw with Elway. He's got his man sharp, complete. Three yards the game there, second down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Second down, Davis. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. From the gun, it's Elway. And that is incomplete. Green Bay up to the task there in coverage and forcing a fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Field goal try forthcoming now for the Broncos. It's a 39-yard attempt right hash. And his kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for them, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Now a handoff looking right, and he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, 
They also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. Okay, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. The Packers on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This time it's third and 3. Now far. And that will be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why. Looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, <laughs> their team's not going to win. And right now he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Now Davis. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now here's Davis to run again on second. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 50 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, Parker, than to understand if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. The first down carry for Davis. And not a lot of daylight. Not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. No luck whatsoever there on the draw. Yeah, they're supposed to use their aggressiveness against them. That was the hope. But maybe they had too big of a meal last night. A half step slow. <laughs> and he ends up running right into the meat of the defense. On second down now, it's Davis. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Broncos on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. On the draw, this is Davis. It's a first down and more for Davis. And finally brought down at the 38. Now this is an example of breaking down the defense because in a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. on this drive so far. It's first and ten. From the gun, a give to Davis. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. No way. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. 
Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. Now Elway to throw. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. A field goal try forthcoming now for the Broncos. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And his kick is right there. It's good. And now it's a two-score game at 9, 16-7. So that one on target, and it adds to this first-half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one-score lead, two-score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. Takes it at the seven. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try and loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. They'll run on first down. Green. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Throwing is far. He finds his man complete. It's Kramer. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Packers on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Favre. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Kramer. And he is going to have a Packers first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. A reminder coming up at halftime while the two of us head for warmer areas of the press box. We'll be sending you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Favre on second down. He finds his man complete. It's Kramer five yards now it's third and five partner it's a lot of fun watching the nfl now isn't it because when the big fellow runs routes it used to be when we were kids he'd run about three different routes and that was it now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there they'll get to the line here but remember it's also third down he's gonna let this go for the end zone and that will be incomplete 
Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Thus far, they haven't been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books. But it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that means line. he's getting plenty of blocking. A lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. On first down, Davis fights loose. And he stops right at the 25 after a gain of five. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle everyone's going to want to touch the football be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage now the broncos are going to call the first you of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime here's a second and five now from the 25. From the shotgun, Elway. Throw left side, complete to Sharp. Now the Broncos going to use on, the second go, of their go. timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Here's Elway. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now it's Elway. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 38. Well, it's a cold night. And whether you're a quarterback that wears a glove on his throwing hand or not, that ball is a rock, Brandon. You've got to really drive it through the cold and the wind, or it can take off on you. And that may have been what happened there. The Packers with a football here late in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. A first and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Off the play fake, here's Favre. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that is incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Here's Favre to throw. Let's it go for Nelson. And it's knocked away and incomplete. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his head around. In this case, though, the DB matched it move for move and knocked it away. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. To throw is far. And that one will fall incomplete. 
clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football, but you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away, and it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football, and now zapped right back in the other direction. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Here again comes the captain of this offense, leading his crew back out there now. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, because he's looked pretty good to this point. A dump off for Davis. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First order of business, though. Let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Denver. And they've had some success on the ground. And with the lead going into the second half, they'll no doubt be looking to keep it going. Meanwhile, for the Packers, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football, and they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Not much has changed since we left you at halftime. The snow still continuing to fall as we are back underway. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And the Bronco offense ready to begin this third quarter of play. Second half starts with a run by Davis. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They'll run it again here with Davis. 80 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. He gets this one to Johnson. And he will have a Broncos first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. And Brandon, from our time in college football, 
where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with Davis. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. So where did all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Here's Elway to throw. He dumps this off underneath. Here's Davis. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? They'll run on first down. It's Davis, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Again, it's Davis. And this Green Bay defense making that play look a lot like the previous one. Both tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. No daylight for him to run through there, and he ran into the defensive tackle. And that guy blocks a whole lot of daylight as it is. He is truly a big man who just made a big play. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. To throw his Elway. He'll drop this off for Davis. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Packer drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. He found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. Second and 16. They'll set up a throw. He gets this to Devontae Adams. And he'll be out of bounds right around the 14. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. He'll look to throw. He's going to loft it deep right sideline. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. This is brought in at the 21. 62 yards on the punt that time. Wow. And that will come the offense as they take over. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2. <laughs> alert for anything out there. Watching for trouble on the road. And making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. On first down. It's Davis. And he'll work this forward for about 3. It's second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They go again with Davis. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. He's got Smith here, and he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. On first, they'll throw with Elway. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. But well, listen, when you've got the lead, there's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. He just put it well over his head, out of harm's way. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now it's Elway. Getting this ball out wide for Davis. Oh, Davis lost it. It's loose. And this is going to be Packer football. We well, had an offense working with a comfortable two-score lead here in the third quarter and certainly doesn't feel as comfortable now following the turnover. Yeah, you're right about that because now the nerves start to come into play a little bit. You're a little bit jangled. You don't want to give your opponents any avenues to get back into the game. What you'd rather do, put up signs and say, roads closed. They'll throw on first down with Favre. The left side completion to Jones. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. The 
They'll run on first down. Green. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Second and eight coming up. They'll keep it on the ground. It's green. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. A third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Over the middle, Sharp's got it complete. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. He finds his man complete. That's Kramer. And the Packers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense. They can't get the stop here. Now far. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. A great play there. There to make the grab. And the Packers have cut it back within a score. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have him, you use him. Because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. Now Crosby for the point after. And it's good. It cuts it to two. 16-14 our score. A drive that time of six plays. And the result, a Green Bay score. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Denver's offense ready to go again. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, punt the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. On first down, Davis. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. 
But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Elway. Caught right side, Davis. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. There's a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. It's a big play there for the Broncos. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. On the carry, it's Davis. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Third quarter of a two-point game. A good one so far. Here's second and ten. Now Elway to throw. They'll set up the screen with Davis. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Boy, that was certainly well-read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short gain. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Now Elway. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. He's got his man sharp, complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's been a good one so far. Just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. Five yards remain on second down. They'll run with Davis. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. On third and one, it's Elway. And that is incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion.
So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. And his kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden they're down. Now it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points... It's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. On first down, far. That one complete to Driver. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Yeah, that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. And he'll give it here to his running back. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly who the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. So from the 36 now, first and 10. To throw is far. Got a man right side. It's sharp. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. 2 first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Here's Farb to throw. Flush to his right. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. It's picked up by the Broncos. Now he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And this is going to be brought back for a Denver touchdown. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave them a comfortable lead. A try here for the extra point. And 
and this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And this will not be returnable. It's out go. of the back of the go. end zone for a touchback. Green Bay's offense ready to go again. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear them, <laughs> the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant, you've got to hold on to the football or else we have no hope. Yeah, it's easy for me to laugh sitting up here, but you're exactly right. If we were down there, that message would have been received a whole different way because turnovers, they've been a big problem for them. Got to take care of the football. Got to hold on to it. First and 10, it's far. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. And that sack, Charles, just looked like a case where a speedy defensive end is a little bit quicker than the offensive tackle. Yeah, it makes it difficult for a tackle to determine what exactly to do. Do you do the kick slide and try and get back in the pocket and meet him there? Do you meet him on the line of scrimmage where they call a quick set? In any event, right now, he's having his troubles. A hole to dig out of here, second and 17. From the gun, it's far. Looking sideline, incomplete. You definitely would like to hit on that one because now you've got a third and long showing up, and you just know defense is going to be getting after it. They are pinning their ears back, and they are coming. The Packers on third down. A pretty anemic, a very anemic one for nine thus far. This is third and 17 from the shotgun. It's far. He's going to air one out. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give him credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Here's J.K. Scott now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And the return man will shuffle through the white stuff, secure the fair catch with both hands. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. From the shotgun, Elway. Airing it out deep for Smith. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he takes it down deep into Green Bay territory. A huge play there for Denver. In today's NFL, you know, we talk about quarterbacks and their speed and accuracy, but there's still something about a guy slinging one downfield. And he made that look effortless, didn't he? I mean, he's had a great game throwing the football. This is going to add to his yardage total in a big way. It's one thing to be accurate on your short and intermediate throws, but when you're hitting the bombs like those, look out. And that one's spanning at even 65 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. Let's go. Let's go. So the big play to kick off the drive set them up first and goal, and they're able to cash in right away on play number two. I think I'm starting to understand more and more when we get ready to do games and we meet with coaches, why they talk about big plays, explosive plays, and how it sets them up for success, because that's exactly how they're able to score on this one. We saw the touchdown, we saw the payoff, but of course that big, long chunk play is what got them in position. 
The extra point splits the uprights, and that will make this a 19-point game. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Here's Martin now following the score as he'll send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position oh battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Favre. And that's complete to Adams. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. So they'll, of course, decline the pass interference there and wisely take the yardage. And I think defensively he's saying, I was getting away with that in the first half. Why are you making that call now? But to me, that one was pretty easy to see. I don't understand what he's upset about. I think it was the correct call. So good field position for the Packers as they come up first and 10 at the 40. Throwing is far. That's complete to Sharp. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. You cannot write these guys off just yet. Not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory, right at the 40. Now whistles here, flag down. I think one of the Packer linemen was moving. Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Now back to throw. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he's taken down inside the 30. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Back to throw again. And incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. It's caught here by Adams. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 18. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. 
So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They'll look to throw again. Throw left side, complete to Sharp. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And to give this time to the tailback, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. And defensively, they must have been expecting a pass. They were in the dime look out there. I think maybe they were deciding to go with speed on the field rather than bulk. I'm with you a little bit surprising. But they wanted people getting to the ball as fast as possible. The lighter shift your defensive backs allow you that opportunity. And a second effort gets him in. Touchdown, Packers. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Packers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them at the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Extra point try now for Crosby. And they're able to cut the deficit to 12. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Denver's offense now set to go. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and 10. They'll run on first down. It's Davis. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football, and that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. From the gun, it's Elway. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Johnson. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. 
Here's Davis now. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Elway off the bootleg. Over the middle, Sharp's got it complete. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take him go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and ten up at the 46. Here's Davis. He'll try and run some clock. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter. Looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips. They're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. And we've got them now. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where there'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from blocking down the game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! That's what so it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Well, they're going to get about three here out of this first down run, and that'll bring up second and seven. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Out of the gun, Elway. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Now the Packers going to burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A field goal try forthcoming now for the Broncos. From the right hash, this from 53. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And that will make this now a 15-point advantage. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Now 
it's Martin to do the honors after the made field goal. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. So the Packers down by 15. Just over a minute, 40 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. They'll throw on first down with Favre. Pass complete. It's Adams. And they're able to get this one across the 35. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Favre. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. He'll drop to throw. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. It's a big play there for Green Bay. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They'll set up a throw. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. Okay, so they got the score. Do you go for one here and save the possible two-point conversion for later? I think you do because if you go for two here and you don't get it, that's deflation. Yeah. Now you wonder why you're even going for it. Take the easy one now and come back and try and get it later. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. And it's good. So that will get them back within one score. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. Time definitely of the essence now. Just under a minute to play, and here we go. And the Broncos are able to recover, and that should just about wrap this one up. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. And with the defense out of timeouts, powerless to stop the clock, this should just be a couple of kneel downs.
The win for the Broncos, seemingly assured they go down to a knee. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward.